Good morning, everybody. So today for the Read Aloud, we are going to be switching gears from the southern colonies, and we're going to start talking about the New England colonies up in the north where I'm from. So before we start the Read Aloud today, I have a little activity for you. You're going to make a prediction. And remember, when we make prediction, ugh, predictions as readers, we make a guess about what we think will happen. And so what your prediction is going to be today is you're going to write about how the life of the pilgrims in New England might have been the same or different as the life of the settlers in the southern colonies, like Virginia. So make a prediction about how their lives will be different and then show it to your parents. This is my prediction here. I wrote that I know that New England is colder than the colonies in the South. And so because it's colder, I think that the pilgrims are gonna have a harder time growing crops. And also um, because of that, maybe more of them will go hungry because in Virginia, they already had a tough time growing crops, but in New England, they're probably gonna have even a harder time. So that's my prediction for today. I want you to write down yours, and then when you've written down your prediction, you can keep playing the video to listen to the read aloud. So for the read aloud today, we are going to be learning about the pilgrims, which means that we're actually going to be traveling back in time to an earlier date before even any of this stuff was happening in the South. So this actually happened before some of the stuff we already learned about. And today's read aloud is a little bit long, but you don't have to do an activity page for it, and you don't have to do any kind of questions for it. All you got to do is listen, and at the end you're going to write down if your prediction was correct. Okay, so just sit back and relax, and let's listen to the story. On a September day in 1620, about a hundred or so men, women, and children boarded a small wooden ship that was nestled in the English harbor known as Plymouth. This ship, called the Mayflower, was bound for North America. You really do have to wonder why people would put their lives at risk to sail across a vast ocean in an overcrowded ship. They must have had very good reasons. I'm sure you remember King James. Jamestown was named after him. Well, King James was not just the head of an England at this time. He was also the head of the Church of England. And King James took his job as head of the church very seriously. He felt that the Church of England was the only established church in the country, and everyone should be part of it. The king also believed that if you didn't support the Church of England, you might not support the king. So King James did not allow people to follow any other religion. Anyone who broke this law could be severely punished. In fact, many people were imprisoned, killed, or forced to leave the country. As you can imagine, this law made a lot of people unhappy, especially those people who wanted to be free to worship as they wished. Two groups in particular were angry with the king. They were known as the Puritans and the Separatists. The Puritans actually belonged to the Church of England. However, the Puritans believed that the Church of England, also known as the Anglican Church, was not strict enough. They wanted a stricter way of life based on how they interpreted the Bible. The Puritans wanted to stay in the church, but they wanted it to be more pure or free of beliefs they didn't agree with. The separatists, on the other hand, wanted people to have the freedom to worship as they pleased, even if that meant separating from the Church of England. King James refused to listen to either group and viewed them both as nothing more than troublemakers. Frustrated and unhappy with the king, a group of separatists left England in 1608 for the Netherlands. There they could practice their religion without fear. However, about ten years later, a group of them decided to return to England because they missed their homeland and culture. They had a plan, though. They did not intend to live in England. Instead, they planned to board a ship and move to a new land, a land that would be their own. They had decided to go to Virginia. King James was delighted. William Bradford was the organizing leader of this group of separatists. Bradford had persuaded the Virginia Company to allow them to make the trip. He also persuaded the company to give them a small piece of land to settle on when they got there. If you recall, it was the Virginia Company that had paid for the English settlers to travel to Virginia in 1606. Before setting off, these separatists became known as pilgrims. 
The word pilgrim is used to describe a person who goes on a pilgrimage or a journey for religious reasons. It was thought that this word best described what these people were doing. And so, this is where we begin, in September 1620, as the pilgrims board the Mayflower. It is important to note that not everyone on board the Mayflower was a pilgrim. There were military officers, adventurers, merchants, craftsmen, indentured servants, and would-be farmers, too. Because they were not part of their church, and the pilgrims were not familiar with them, the pilgrims called the other travelers on board the ship strangers. Regardless of that, what they were called, all of these people hoped for a better life and were willing to put their lives at risk to get it. The journey to Virginia did not start out well. Very strong winds made the voyage a difficult one. The winds were so strong that they battered the ship and blew it off course. It took more than two months to complete the journey. When they finally arrived, they were not in Virginia. At the first sight of land, the captain instructed that they drop anchor, Although those on board were happy to see land after two months on board a ship, it soon became clear that they were not where they were supposed to be. For one thing, the weather was much colder than they were prepared for. Because they were far north of the area granted to them by the Virginia Company, the pilgrim leaders on board drew up a plan outlining how the colony should be governed, even before landing their ship. That's right. Right there on the ship, they decided what the rules should be and who would make them. The main objective or goal of the group, which included both pilgrims and so-called strangers, was to work together in peace and fairness to make their colony a success. This document, written by William Bradford and the pilgrims' religious leader, William Brewster, became known as the Mayflower Compact. Most of the men on board the Mayflower signed the agreement, 41 of them to be exact. Once again, women and of course children were not included. Today, the Mayflower Compact is a very important document because it was the first document in the English colonies to guarantee self-government. The group sent an exploratory party in a rowboat to investigate the coastline, while everyone else remained on board the ship. The men in this party encountered Wampanoag Native Americans. The two groups shot at each other with muskets and bows and arrows. The English party advanced and explored an area that became known as Provincetown, on the very northern tip of Cape Cod, and what is now the state of Massachusetts. Based on information provided to them by the exploratory party, the pilgrims and others did not settle the area that became known as Provincetown. Instead, they sailed farther to a rocky harbor area they named Plymouth, which was fitting because the group had first departed England from the port of Plymouth. Some historians have recorded that the passengers on board the Mayflower took their first steps in North America when they alighted onto a large granite boulder on the shoreline. This boulder is now known as Plymouth Rock, though some believe the story of the pilgrims landing on this specific rock may be a legend. What we do know is that the date was December 21st, 1620. The pilgrims had arrived in North America. Sadly, the settlers were not prepared for how bitterly cold the winters could be in New England. In addition, the journey had been so terrible that many of the settlers were sick. Without warm clothing and shelter, and with very little food, one by one the settlers began to die. Almost half of them died during that first winter. All right, that's actually the end of the read aloud. And your job now is to take what you just learned from the read aloud and write down what was the answer to your prediction. Were you right? about how the life for the pilgrims in New England was different than the colonists in the southern colonies? Or were you wrong? Or were there some things that you didn't know before? So write down your thoughts, um, show them to your parents, and then your next job is to read chapter 10 in your book. It's called Pilgrims Part 1 Arrival. And then you're going to fill out this activity page, activity page 7.1. Okay, good luck.